Okay guys, so today we're gonna to go over one of the most fundamental movements that are very commonly done wrong, and that is the push-up. Now the push-up has many moving parts to it, and done right, you can get incredible results from it, but it has to be done with the right system. First of all, there's some fundamental things we need to clear up, and that is to understand how it works biomechanically in our body. Doing a push-up is gonna hit so many things from your chest, your shoulders, your tricep, your abs, even being locked up onto your leg, just gonna hit your quads and so many parts of your body is actually a pretty full body movement. But there's some certain target muscles that we're trying to hit, and it can be done in certain ways to hit those muscle groups. Let's start off with the chest. Now our chest is designed to pull our humerus, or, the, or our arm, in front of our body. Although it's such a big muscle, that is basically what it's doing, okay? Um, your triceps are to extend it from your elbow, okay? So you've got chest moving in, and tricep extending. And it's these two together that create this movement here, okay? So we can take advantage of these two mechanics to hit certain parts of the body to really put the intensity on it. But some certain fundamentals need to be in place. First of all, the structure. Now, the most commonly done wrong thing is people, when they're doing a push-up, say you're the floor here, they put their hands here, okay? Now, the problem with that is we need to have our bones in line, okay? So when we're doing a push-up and our hands up here and we come down, look at my elbows. My elbows start to bend. Now, if I do it from the front, you have this, okay? So when you're doing it this way, it's a lot joint intensive, so your elbows get a lot of the pressure there. Plus, you're starting to hit a bit more shoulders, and your body's just not mechanically in the right position. This is what a lot of people do, because when they first do it, they lock their hips in place, and they start leaning forward and hinging from their hip, because they feel they're getting that depth, because their face is coming closer to the ground. But we're not hitting the right muscle group and we're actually putting a lot of strain on the joints. What we need to be doing is bringing our hands from here down to in line with our chest. Now when our elbows come out, the bone structure managed to keep in line. That is the most important thing. As soon as we go to here and we push, nothing's in line, we have a lot of joint pressure. If we go to here and now we push, now we're driving with our joints in place because our muscles lengthen and shorten. And we want to be pulling in the direction of the fibers. So the fibers go in and out like this. Your chest fibers run from here, okay? So when we're doing a push-up, we want to have our chest in line with our hands and our elbows fraying out, not in, but out, okay? This is for a more chest intensive um, push up. That way we can control down towards the ground and drive up from there. Now, if we want to hit our triceps, what we do is we now take the movement from the chest down to that elbow, but now we need to keep mechanically the joints in line. So we go from here, we don't just lower or higher, we bring our elbows in to keep our joints still in line to drive from the triceps. So we tuck those elbows to our body and push away, keeping the joint still in line. Now here's the kicker. Imagine if you're doing a push-up and it was a slippery floor, what would happen? You would slide out like this, right? That shows that we're actually pushing up and out, okay? So that's chest and tricep intensive there. Now, if you really want to hammer in on your, on your chest and you're a little bit more advanced, grab the floor and squeeze the floor together as hard as, your, uh, as hard as you can throughout the entire movement. So actually pushing your hands together, holding that inward intention while controlling it down and up. Now what this takes advantage of is you have an agonist and antagonist in your arm. So when one muscle flexes, the other one has to relax and vice versa so that it can allow that movement. If we flex our bicep, we will biomechanically disengage somewhat our tricep and vice versa. So by pushing in, we're engaging our bicep, which disengages more of the tricep, which means that your chest has to compensate. So if you're pushing in, not only are you activating your chest, you're disengaging the element of your tricep, making it a lot more chest intensive. And that's a great hack if you're a little bit more advanced. Now some extra tips for executing this move is making sure that your body's actually in the correct position as well. Now a lot of people when they do push-ups, what they do is they just hold this position, now their bum's really high or it starts to sag. You have to make sure that you engage your core. So you're actually gonna tuck your tailbone. By tucking your tailbone, you're gonna shorten the fibers in the abs and engage your abs to take the pressure off your lower back. So 
tuck that tailbone there to engage. Okay, now, if you lead with your chest and leave your hips slightly higher, this is the harder version because you're putting a lot of your body weight onto that upper body. Obviously then, that's why you can drop your knees and your body weight's now shifting back onto your knees to take a percentage off there, okay, to make this easier. But even then, lead with your chest because gravity will always help you go down. So control it down from here and then if you can, drive up in that same position. What you'll mostly likely see is people have sagging hips and they go like this or they'll leave their hips behind and do this. Obviously, it makes you feel like you're getting a full range of motion, but you're not activating what we need to. It's not just doing the movement that matters, it's what happens within that movement. So tuck the tailbone, lead with the chest, and even if you can't come up, control yourself all the way down, take the pressure off for a second, and if you need to now curve up to come up, because you can't quite do it yet, at least you're getting the eccentric portion of the way down you have a concentric and eccentric. So you've got the tension or the, the activation on the way up, the shortening of the fibers. And on the way down, as you lengthen these fibers, a lot of damage happens, which will build muscle and build strength. Make sure you follow us for more of these. We're gonna make this a weekly thing now, just giving you basic tips on very commonly uh, done wrong exercises. We'll be hitting up every week. So like, subscribe, do whatever you need to to follow us, and we'll see you soon.